Welcome to the webinar. Um, today we're going to be discussing SOLIDWORKS Electrical Professional. I am Mallory Becker. I am an Applications Engineer. Um, I solely work with the electrical um, products. And then we also have Stephen Darcy here. He is going to be answering questions um, as the demo is going on. So you can either type in questions. Um, you can type in questions at the chat um, and we'll answer them through the chat as well as go over questions at the end as well. And then we have Melanie Gavora. She is our electrical account manager. So she does the sales um, side for the electrical team. Today we are going to be, again, looking at SOLIDWORKS Electrical Professional. We're going to be looking over, um, we're going to be creating a project from scratch and we are going to be looking at um, locations. We are going to be looking at schematic or line diagrams, so like um, single line diagrams. We're going to be looking at um, schematics, so for um, your high power and then your control schematics. We're going to be looking at a 2D panel layout as well as reporting and some other topics as well. Um, looking at the location, so I just want to give you an idea, um, a physical representation of what we're doing. So this is a heat exchange, a solar heat exchanger. Um, so we've got that heat exchange up at the top um, on that left picture there. Um, we've got the boiler room and then the mechanical room. And then inside of the mechanical room, we have a cabinet and that cabinet has a door and then the cabinet itself. So those are all gonna be locations that we're gonna be creating in the project. Um, and then before I jump into the demo, we have a poll question just about how you, um, how are you currently um, creating your electrical schematics. So I'm going to send that out and then if um, everybody could respond to that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Whoops, wrong one. All right, and then while you're answering that poll, oh, we're getting some answers in here. So it looks like we got a 50-50 between um, using another product that is used for electrical design and then um, making them on napkins and hoping that it gets documented. Um, we, you know, when we do our demos, we see a lot of, you know, everything from everywhere using, you know, Visio and, you know, other things like that. Um, so, and we switch over a lot of people, um, speed up their design process with um, reporting and the design library. So um, we're gonna dive into that right now. So what we're looking at is SOLIDWORKS Electrical, and this is 2022. So they did make some changes if you have seen SOLIDWORKS Electrical before. In 2022, they have made some changes to the look and feel of the software. Everything is still in the same general location, just again, different icons, um, modernizing it a little bit. So what we're going to do, this is the or sorry, this is the project manager, and the project manager stores all of the different projects um, that are in your database. So it's based off of a SQL database. It stores all of the information, your projects, um, all of your library information for symbols and manufacturer parts, title blocks, all of that is stored in the software. We're gonna go ahead and create a new project, and there are templates, so the software does come with templates, we are going to use one of those templates. You can also create your own, so as, as this is opening, um, and you can customize that to call out specific things that you want. So if you want your components to be numbered a certain way, let me just type this here so I don't start typing what I'm writing. And, um, Sorry, I forgot where I was there. Um, so you can create your own template. So if you want things to be numbered a certain way, you want to have specific title blocks pop up 
for your specific type pages. Um, you want your wires to be numbered a certain way. The wire styles are also included in that project template. Um, as you can see in the project template, it also does have um, pages that you can put in there. So if you want a project structure um, with, make sure you have a cover page and a drawing list um, in your project every single time, you can include that in the project template. So you can go ahead and take a look at the cover page. Um, and you can have, you know, revision information, the name of the project, any description information can be included um, in that. And then we've got a drawing list that is automatically included. What's nice about this is this is automatically generated. And we'll be looking at the reports later on to see um, how this is updated, you know, if we add pages and things like that. Um, all of this gets updated automatically. I'm going to go ahead and create my locations to start off with. So I'm going to go to the components panel. So currently I have no components in my tree. I haven't added any symbols or manufacturer parts to my project. I want to get my location set up so that when I'm creating this, I can put my components in the correct location. I can find them faster when I need them. So I'm going to go to the electrical project tab here and go to locations. I'm going to go ahead and modify this one. Instead of the main electrical closet, I'm going to call this the mechanical room. And then I can create sub locations. So these are locations inside of the mechanical room. I'm going to create, actually, I'm going to only create one. There we go. And then this is going to be my main electrical cabinet. And then I'm going to create another sublocation for the cabinet. I want to call out the items that are on the door separately. Now, every project has to have at least one location, and everything can be put into that location if you don't want to use this functionality. I'm going to go ahead and create another new location. I'm going to call it the boiler room. And then inside of the boiler room, I'm also going to have a chassis. And then one more main location of the heat exchanger. All right, and you can add locations at any time. Um, I'm just adding at the beginning, so again, I can organize my project, put my components into those locations. All right, we're going to go um, to the line diagram page. So this is a single line diagram. It is a higher level document where you're not showing as much of the detail in your design. So I'm going to go ahead and insert symbol. So I know I want a circuit breaker. So I'm going to create a circuit breaker. And all of these symbols are something that can be customized. Now this is automatically going to number this component for me. Um, that, again, is something that you set up in your project template settings. Um, right now I have my circuit breakers coming up as Q, and I'm going to go ahead and add a manufacturer part right away. So if you know the manufacturer part right away, you can add it. Otherwise, you can just place it saying, I know I need a circuit breaker, and then you can come back at any time and get to these properties. Now for this one, I know the component uh, reference, which would be the manufacturer part number. And I'm going to search for a partial part number and see what pops up. So I've got three different options here just by this partial part number. And any part number information that you put into the system, so, you know, number of circuits or if there's a specific use voltage that you want to be able to search by, any information that you put into the library, you're going to be able to pull out. Um, so for this one, um, I'm gonna, just going to see, so they're all three circuits, six terminals, so anyone should work for me. I'm going to select this top option. Just going to double click there, select that, and then that gets applied to my symbol. So I get that manufacturer data, it gets pulled in, I can say OK, and then um, I'm just going to keep that in the mechanical room for right now. So you've got that. Now I've got, um, I want to be able to put more than one symbol in, so I've got this pin here. So if I want to be able to put more than one in, I can tack that pin in. 
and then it allows me to just continue to place symbols. So this next one is going to be a contactor. And any of these symbols in the library you can customize. So that does come with components in the library. You can add any components. You can modify any of the components that are in the library. So I'm going to go ahead and search again for the manufacturer part. And again, I'm going to search by a partial part number. And it was enough to just pull up the one that I'm looking for here. You can see it shows the um, circuit information that's included in the part. So it's got a relay coil circuit, it's got some normally open power contacts, and then it's got a normally open contact. If we go and look at this manufacturer part, um, this is what the, they look like in the library. So it needs to have a reference and a manufacturer, um, and then you put it in the class to help it automatically label your components how you want them to be labeled. Um, you can attach a data sheet here if you'd want to. Um, and then you can also associate symbols with these components. So um, I can choose the manufacturer part and then have a symbol associated to it. Um, and then you can add description information. So any of this information can show up either on the symbol itself or in a report. The other part of the manufacturer parts is that circuits and terminals that we were talking about. So circuit information, um, this circuit has two terminals in it. Um, you can put a max number of wires in there. So maybe these can only take, you know, these terminals can only take three wires. Um, and then there is maximum and minimum wire section or wire gauge information that you can also associate with the terminals. I'm just going to modify this component only here. Um, and then we're going to say OK. And then that information gets put onto the symbol there. I'm going to go ahead and add a terminal strip. And then I'm going to let that label it X1. And I'm not going to put a manufacturer part because each of the individual terminals, once I put those in, will get uh, manufacturer part information. And then the last part is going to be our pump. Yeah. Again, I'm going to search. And when you're searching, you do not have to search with the correct capitalization. It will find um, that information. All right, so we've got our motor added. And then I'm just going to draw, so because we're not showing all the detail, we're just going to put a line connecting the devices. Now I could go in, there is detailed cabling, you can go in and because I've got manufacturer part information, it will show me that manufacturer part information. I could go and apply a cable here. We're going to come back and look at this after we've gone and drawn the schematic. So, but it pulls all that data um, into this detailed cabling as well. Right, now we're going to go and start drawing our detail in the schematic. So we're going to start with our uh, power information. Now for this schematic, so each page in the schematic has properties to it, so each drawing. And for this location, I am going to um, keep this at the mechanical room. Most of the parts in here are just going to be um, inside of the cabinet. Actually, I'm going to change this to the electrical cabinet. Uh, most of these components in here are going to be in that main electrical cabinet. So by setting this information here, the components will automatically take the location of the page. Now, I can put, we'll see here, I'll put some different parts. So like the pumps, I'm going to put them in a different location. So I'm going to start with my draw multiple. And this is for drawing um, wires that are grouped together. So it's still individual wires. It's not a cable here. Um, they're just wires that you draw together. So like your three-phase wiring um, or your, you know, if you have two-phase wiring, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and 
draw my lines down and then I can bend these you know if you needed them to go across the page um, I'm just hitting the space bar you can change the orientation of those um, depending on what you're going to in the order that you need them in all right and then I'm going to go ahead and insert a symbol I'm it pulls up the last symbol that you placed um, and then in the library there are quite a few components here so I'm going to look in that fuses disconnectors and I'm going to select that component and place that on my wires again automatically going to number or like label your component uh, based off of settings in your project template so that's something that saves you time you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what it should be called if you've you know already numbered something that um, it will let you know it will always give it a new number there all right again we're going to search for a partial actually what i can do with this one is um, because we've already placed it in the um, electrical or sorry the line diagram there i'm able to select that from the components tree and then it will automatically take the properties that were there oh actually i didn't put this one in there never mind so i'm going to um, search for this one i got to um, take that off of there so actually just going to place it again place it again f1 manufacturer parts we're going to search for a fuse now if i wanted to i could search for that um, circuit so like number of circuits is four and i can search it pulls up two within the snyder electric so i'm going to choose that first one and if you see they were blue and now these terminals are green that means that the circuit information in the symbol matches the circuit information in the manufacturer part and we're good to go there and it automatically associates all those together and then we can see here it pulls up that data on the symbol so we've got that um, terminal the component number we've got terminal information that's pulled from that manufacturer part as well as uh, manufacturer part information so the size um, and then the the manufacturer part number and the manufacturer information that is all information that you can customize in the symbol so that it shows up every time you use it it'll show up the way you want it to show up all right i'm going to go ahead and draw our motor circuit now and i'm going to choose the direction that the wires are going to cascade so i want them to go down and to the right i'm just going to draw that out and then i'm going to go ahead and insert in my symbols here so again i can go um, insert symbol on there on the command ribbon and then go search for my symbol so i'm going to start with the motor get our three phase motor here i'm going to place that on the wires now for this one i already have a um, that pump that i want to associate this to so i can just select that here and then it pulls up that information so i can say okay and then all that information will automatically display. Now, I also have a symbols palette available to me that I can customize and put in um, symbols that I commonly use. So then I can just click and drag. So I can click that on my lines there. See so one, again, I want to associate this to my Q1 that's in my line diagram. It shows a nice little image here to um, help you make sure you're associating it to the one you thought you were um, and again it pulls that manufacturer data in i already signed it once i don't have to do that again all right and then i can go to my contactors and i can pull my contactor out place that on my wires and then again associate this to my ms1 All right, I want to put some terminal blocks between my motor um, and my contactor here. So I'm going to insert multiple terminals at once. Um, you can have your terminals look any way you want, right? You can have different symbols, different representation for how your terminal blocks look. Now, all of these are going to be put into the same terminal strip. I'm going to draw a line that intersects all of the wires that I want a terminal on. 
and I'm going to choose the direction of that. And then I'm going to put all of these terminals into that existing terminal strip that we selected, um, we created in the line diagram page. And then what's nice about this is this will add all four terminals for me. So I'm gonna say, okay, all terminals. And then it puts all that information in there. We also have a very nice terminal strip editor. I can look at my entire terminal strip and then I can see the information that's associated with the terminals here. So um, I can quickly assign manufacturer parts. And we're gonna do a Wago terminal. And then that can assign it quickly to all of those terminal blocks. All right, now I'm gonna make this a cable. So I want the wires or the um, what's going between the terminal blocks and the motor to be a cable. So I'm gonna right click and then associate cable cores. There is a library of um, cables. This is, this is um, back here is a list of cables that are in my um, project. So you can have multiple of the same cable in there. So what I wanna do here is I want to um, select a conductor number. So I want 4G um, to help me narrow down what I'm looking for. And then I want to select that. It's got four conductors here. So I'm gonna double click to select that. It adds that cable to my project here, and then I can associate. So what I'm gonna do here is say, I want these four wires to be represented by these four cable conductors. So I'm gonna associate those. And because they're in the same order, so like one to one, two to two, three to three, um, I can highlight them all like that. Otherwise you can do one at a time to associate if it's in a different order than you've selected. And then that um, turns into a cable representation. So this calls out the cable number and then it calls out the conductor color information. That is something that you can customize um, to display how you want that to display for the motor there. All right. Now I wanna go look at a uh, what we call a macro. So this is a library circuit. So what I'm gonna do here, um, and they're designated by a star, um, I'm gonna drag this information out here. So this is something that I've previously drawn and I want to uh, be able to use again in this project as well as in other projects. And this is a transformer circuit. So um, what this does, what a macro does is it stores not just a symbol information or manufacturer part inf information separately, it combines all that together. So you have wire information, you have your symbol information and the location of that, and then you have the, if there is manufacturer part data associated with it, um, that all gets retained as well. And I want these to all number um, in an existing way, or uh, to um, have a new, new marks for everything. So I'm just going to let it create new marks for my components. Um, and then we'll also create new marks for the wire numbers as well. And then all that information. So again, that manufacturer part information gets retained and then the circuit information also gets contained. All right, and maybe I realize that I want um, another motor um, we can go ahead and create a macro of this motor as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything that I want inside of the macro, and I'm going to click and drag into one of my categories. And you can create your own custom um, categories in the macros um, palette over there as well. And you can give it a name and you can organize it. It does put it into a library where you can search. What's nice about that is you can also copy and paste those. Um, into a new macro and just maybe modify manufacturer part information if you have a bunch of different options for transformers or something like that. You're able to go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna say okay because I just wanna use it um, in this project right now. And then I can click and drag. And I'm gonna have it create new marks for um, the cable. Um, so I want it to be like a W2 instead of still associated double one. I wanna make sure the components um, I want the terminal strip, so I want to add these to the same terminal strip, and I want the terminals to create new numbers. 
and then I'm going to create new marks on the wire style as well. I'm going to hit finish there and then I can again quickly duplicate that and will automatically renumber that information. And then we've got that, you know, the cable information still all there. We've got a new pump. All right, so now that I've done that though, my numbers are out of order. So I've got a Q1, Q3, Q2. What I wanna do here is I can easily renumber my marks. So I want to renumber my components and I want to recalculate the order number. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, to that. It does warn you um, that say, once you do this, you can't do like a control Z to undo. Now I have my Q1, Q2, and Q3, um, and everything's all in order here. All right, so now that I've added um, this section to my schematic, I need to jump back to my line diagram, and I need to add that information to my line diagram. So what I'm going to do is we can also associate, so I've got my Q2, I can right click and insert, and, um, I can insert in a symbol and have that associated. And then I can insert in my MS2, insert symbol, and that pulled up the right symbol. So I can just place that one. I don't need another terminal strip, but I do need my other pump. So my P2, and that pulled up the correct symbol there. And then I can again go ahead and connect my components. And then when I make those connections, I go back into that detailed cabling, that information is now there. So that cable information, it's automatically associated with the schematic. Once it sees the correct origin and destination information, the connection, the line between, um, it adds that information. I've got all those, my eight terminal blocks, um, and then I've got that information for the motor here still. And then it shows where it's connected to as well. All right, so now we're gonna jump and do our um, low voltage information. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my new page here. Now for this one, um, a lot of this information is going to go onto the door. So what I want to do here is change the properties of the page. And I'm going to go to the door here. Set that to door and then I'll change component location. If there were um, components on the page, it would automatically change the location there. Now, once I thought about that, I'm going to go back here and I'm actually going to put these components into the correct location. So I'm going to go and do a location outline. So I'm gonna draw a box around specific components that I want to be put in a different location than what's on the page. So in this case, I want this to go into the boiler room. And I'm gonna change that component location. So now it's put the pump into the boiler room. So now that pump is automatically moved. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with P2, but I'm going to put this one in the heat exchanger room. I'm going to select heat exchanger. And I'm going to change that component location as well. And then everything else on this page is put into that electrical cabinet. So I can keep the rest of those in that location. All right. <clears throat> Now for the low voltage, I am going to use a single wire style. So that's gonna just be one wire, one wire type. You can draw multiple lines. So if I wanted to draw, you know, two or three of the same wire at once, I could do that. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna draw one. And I'm just gonna create a box here. And what's nice is it will, um, if you can see there's a dash line once I'm lined up with this other box, so it will help me to um, line up my wires. It'll do the same thing when you're lined up with a terminal as well. Now what I can do is I can just click and drag this down. I can click and drag this up. 
and then start drawing my components here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert in a um, push button here. Buttons and switches. And then I want a um, normally open. Uh, we'll search by image here. Here it is, normally open push button. And again, with these schematic symbols, most of the symbols um, come with the library. So your standard ANSI and IEC symbols um, come with the library. All right, so I'm gonna have this um, label S1 based off of my switch, and then I'm gonna go ahead and search for a manufacturer part. And I'm gonna search in um, Alan Bradley. And then we've got one that pulls up here. That's a normally. All right, so it looks like um, this one is a normally close, but what I can do is I can force the association here. Maybe the, um, the terminal information is actually incorrect. Is it not? Oh no, it just has four, sorry, it just has four, it has a normally open and a normally closed um, circuit with it. So it's got a spare um, contact there. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and find a push button, more like an emergency stop push button. I gotta go back into my buttons and switches. This one is a normally closed. We're going to let that label that S2 and add a manufacturer part. And I've got two options here. I am going to choose this first one, this 30 millimeter. All right, and then I've got a relay coil I've got to put on here. And this relay coil is going to associate to the, so I gotta go to coils here, the contactor that I already have, that MS1. So instead of finding a manufacturer part, I'm going to find that MS1 and associate it to that. And then if we go to the manufacturer parts and circuits, it's now taking over that relay coil circuit. Pulls, pulls all that data in. You can drag this over. There's also um, cross-referencing information that you can include um, that'll automatically pop up. So this is a parent and child relationship. You can also do same level um, cross-referencing as well. All right, so I've got a few more symbols to insert. I've got a normally open contact and then a light. So I'm gonna go to my contacts classification, my normally open contact. And then this is also going to associate to MS1. And then I've got a light. My indicator light here. Again, I'm gonna let that label it um, H1, and then I'm gonna go and search for a manufacturer part for this one. All right, so now I just need to, I'm gonna copy this wire. Paste it here, paste it here as well, and then I can delete this section. All right, and then I need to change this wire style here. So this I need to be my neutral wire. So what I'm gonna do is go to my wire style and I'm going to go to replace. So instead of redrawing it, um, I'm going to propagate to echo potential. So what that will do is it'll also change all the sections that go to these components here. So I'm going to propagate to echo potential, and then I'm going to choose that neutral wire 
from that multiple wire style we were using on that power page. And then that automatically changes that um, wire style for all those connected wires there. All right, so now that I've done that, I can um, change my origin destination arrows, or sorry, insert my origin destination arrows to show the flow from this page four to page five. So I'm going to go origin destination arrows, single insertion. Oh, and I must not have changed it to the correct wire style because what it happens is it um, has you um, only go to the same wire style. So for that one, I'm going to do a single insertion, at least on this one. Oops, which is also not correct. I used the wrong wire style. So what I can easily do here is change that here. Replace. And I think I used the 12 volt AC. Now I'll just change this one as well to be that neutral wire. So that came in from a macro, so those wires were a little bit different. So back to my origin destination arrows. Now I can choose my destination. They are matching the wire style. So it's a safety check to make sure you're not going from say like 480 AC to 24 volt DC um, kind of thing if they're the same color wire. And then these are also intelligent so I can double click on them and then it will bring me to that location in the schematic. And then I don't want to have to redraw this again so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy with insertion point and then I'm going to uh, paste special. And that paste special, just like with the macros, is going to allow me to, you know, if I want to go to my components and I want to associate these to existing components, I can do that. So my H1, S1, and S2, I want those to create new components. But this one I want to um, be associated to my um, contactor MS2. I'm going to select that there. Now you can also um, replace this after the fact. So I could come in, go right click and go to my symbol properties and I can change that at any point. So if I needed that to be associated to something different, I could have that. So you can always get to these properties. You can always change out your manufacturer parts, things like that. All right, now we are going to go ahead and number our wires. So I'm going to go to the process tab. I'm going to go number new wires. So this is going to number anything that does not already have a wire number. And then those wire numbers are part of the formula for the wires. So each of your wire styles can have a different um, numbering formula. We can, you know, number it by page and row number. Um, you know, we can add static text in there. So for neutrals, we've got an N with a dash and then that counts up um, and then we can see here we've also got phased information for the wire numbering as well so you can set that up however you want inside of your wire styles all right so now we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to look at go look back at the terminal strips so we can see now we've got multiple um, terminal strips, or sorry, we've got those two sets of terminal strips. Um, we can see what's connected, so origin destination information, we can see that there is a cable associated to it. We have um, terminal strip drawing, so this will automatically generate a terminal strip based off of a configuration that's set up. And this will create a page, and then we can go and view the page here. So we got that generated. We can go and view that. So again, this is something that you can set up and customize, um, you know, how the terminal blocks look, where, um, you know, what information is called out, the symbols that are showing up. Um, but that's something that we can automatically generate once that configuration is set up. All right, back at the schematic here. So what we're gonna do now is create a 2D panel layout. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create that page. So on this process tab, there is a 2D cabinet layout. And those are, um, so this is where our locations come into play. So what I can do is create, um, I'm going to do in main electrical closet. So I'm going to create a panel layout for that electrical closet. It will include that door, which is a sub location. So anywhere you have a check, it's going to create a page for that location. And then it will include all the components that are inside of that location. So I've got another page that's added. And then I can see my components here. And I'm going to change my scaling. All right. And then what I want to do is I don't have the actual electrical cabinet yet in my project. So what I'm going to do is go into the the locations properties and I can add manufacturer parts that I don't necessarily need a component number for but I want to make sure get um, put onto my fill material and also I can include them in my 2D panel layout so I'm going to go to those location properties and I'm going to go to search and then I'm going to search for a Rital cabinet get that added. I'm going to search. I'm also going to add in my DIN rail and my wire ducting. So these are going to be the ground parts. And I'm going to search there. And select um, a couple of DIN rails and some wire ducting, 036, 202, this one. So I'll add a couple of wire ducts as well. So again, all of those get added to my project without needing a um, component number. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert in my cabinet. And because I have a um, symbol already associated inside of the manufacturer part, it's automatically going to pull that up for me. Now for the door part of this, I am going to draw a box. Um, you could include it in the symbol if you wanted to, but I'm just going to draw a box here and then pull that box over to represent the door. Then I'm going to go ahead and insert in my rail. And I can graphically choose a length or I can if I go back to my cabinet layout tab I can also say I want this to be 12 inches I want it to be a nice round number I can go ahead and update that length I can add in another rail you can also specify so if I want this to be 12 inches right away I can specify that as well we'll go ahead and insert in our wire ducting And then you can also insert these. You can rotate these so that they are vertical as well. All right, we'll move these over a little bit. All right now for components. So again, you can associate components with the I think some of them are still in the main electrical. Um, you can associate components or the symbols with the components, or you can search for, it'll automatically go to the class, the same class that it's in. So maybe for this one, I want a green indicator. Um, and then I can insert in, maybe for this one, I want a red indicator. You can select those symbols to be placed for S1, for my push button. Um, this one will add in a red push button. Actually, it should probably be green here. Green push button. And you can place these where you want. Now, also inside of this, so I'm going to go ahead and insert in a breaker. And we can place that on top of the did rail um, and insert in a transformer, place that on the 
um, panel layout as well. We can also do linear dimensions. So if you need to dimension specific things, you know, these are so far apart. Um, we can do text leaders. as well. So you can call that out and put notes on there as well. All right, now as we're working on the project, um, our reports are being generated. So as I was adding components, as I was adding cables, as I was connecting origin destinations, all of that was being generated as we were working. And those reports were being made for us. So we've got bill of materials, we've got uh, wires, we've got cables, we've got that drawing list. So you can see I've got this drawing list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to generate these drawings so I can get them as pages in my project. And SolidWorks Electoral does come with standard reports, but with the professional version, you can also customize any of these reports. So if you wanted to maybe remove some of the information or maybe have it display a little bit differently, all of that can be done um, for, the, for those reports. So you can see I've got pages that were added into my project there. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder so I can organize this information a little bit better. And then I want to put all that information. I can just quickly move those into that folder. And then you can see our drawing list here. It's got our additional pages that have been added, um, list of wires by line style. So this is a like a from to list. Um, and then you can also do the same thing with the cables here. So you can have cable information in reports. Um, another thing that we can do um, within the projects is we can add, I'm gonna add a new folder. So I can also add reference documentation. Now this got put into, oh no, that's in the right spot. Okay, so what I can do here is I can insert in data files. And these should be on my desktop in a folder here. So I can insert in PDF files and these will actually print with the software. So if you had say, or it'll also just be saved with it. You can also do shortcuts. So if it's a changing document, you can make sure to shortcut that, but this will open up that document. Um, so you have access, quick access to that within your project. And then for final documentation, for creating and printing all of this out, um, we can export these as D individual DWG files or we can create a PDF file. And then with the PDF, oh, this is fine, I can save it here and then we'll name it. So we'll give it, you know, tell it what we want the document to be called. Um, I can also export those PDF files with the um, electrical, if I wanted to include that in the data set as well. And then um, it also includes hyperlinks and bookmarks. Um, this is a nice feature that you can turn on um, to make sure that your reports are updated based off of the latest and greatest in your project. So you can have it prompt you to update your drawings. And then our PDF gets created. And then the linking so that I'm gonna figure out where it should be included. Uh, but it will also include the bookmarks. So it will, if you wanna make sure to go to page four, it will also include the components tree. So if you want to get to the line diagram or the schematic version, it will bring you to the location, the page of those. Oops, my zoom is backwards from what I'm used to. There we go. 
So it will um, navigate you to the specific page of your component there and have a nice documentation. We'll show those PDFs at the end there. There's those PDFs that I added to the project as well. So SolidWorks Electrical can help you to quickly um, create your schematics, um, be able to reuse information quickly either within a project or within multiple projects. Um, and then it will also create your documentation for you. So your bill of materials, your um, wireless, things like that. It will help you to you know, create that documentation um, without having to go to another program or anything like that. And then let's see. Go back here. Um, so Go Engineer also offers um, classroom training. So we offer a training class for electrical. We do a standard class as well as custom classes for SolidWorks Electrical. Um, and we can do that in person or online. And the online is taught with an instructor. We also have um, online resources. We have a, a Go Engineer YouTube channel. We also have a blog that you can find on the Go Engineer website. It's got um, a lot of different information on that. You can also take certifications um, with your subscription. And then Go Engineer is pretty much across the country. So we have somebody in every time zone. So your support for tech support um, goes from 7 a.m. I'm in Central, so it'd be 7 a.m. Central to 7 p.m. Central. Um, and then we also offer services, so uh, to help you get set up with Electrical, to help you install if you're not comfortable with that SQL database kind of thing. Um, we offer PDM implementation. SolidWorks Electrical does um, connect with PDM, and if you want to have a further conversation with that, we can do that. Um, and then we do um, other services as well. So and we've got a newsletter, training, our YouTube channel, um, and then we've got some other webinars coming up this week. And now for Q&A. All right. Thanks, Mallory. That, that was awesome. So uh, I thought I'd do Q&A a little bit different. I will go ahead and uh, ask you the questions, and then uh, you can see if I got the same answers that you do. That sound pretty good? Okay. <laughs> All right, so the first one is an easy one. It says, will there be a recording of the webinar to yes. view in the upcoming days? So that Yes, there will be. A couple people asked that. Uh, what version of SolidWorks are you using, SolidWorks Electrical? I was using 2022. Okay, and so we had uh, another person asking about, they're, they're on 2021, and mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the major improvements, or where can they find some of those? Um, I believe we have a, a blog article um, explaining the differences, but um, a lot of the differences are the interface, and then they've also sped up a lot of the searching within the database. So when you're searching for reports, uh, uh, you know, generating those reports or searching in the library, or when you're pulling up that project template into a new project, um, all that has been um, sped up They've done some things on the back end to help speed that up. Um, there's also more linking in the reporting that you can do. So like you can go to your report, you can right click on it and then navigate within your project as well. So there's been you know a lot of new features that have been added. Yeah, perfect. And that's, I went ahead and sent them a link to our, uh, our website where we have some of the videos for the what's new stuff. Okay. Um, are there tools for complex parts like PLCs? Yes, there are. Um, there is a PLC configuration tool. So a lot like I was talking about with that um, terminal block page that can be developed, um, mm -hmm. you can set up a PLC to be able to um, automatically generate based off of what terminals you've selected on the PLC. And if you'd want more information on that, um, we can definitely set up a demo if you wanna reach out to Steven, myself, or Melanie. Um, we can get you set up with that uh, demo to display more of that functionality. Perfect. Uh, next to kind of come in is, uh, is there a wizard to import AutoCAD symbols and title blocks and stuff? 
Yes, there are. Now, I won't say that it's, you know, 100% accurate, but it will get that information in and we can translate um, variables. So like your component numbering. Now it can, uh, we can bring in DWG files. So if you're just using plain AutoCAD, we can bring that in. It'll show up just as text and lines, but we can add the intelligence to that at least. Um, but we also offer, um, have a tool to import in AutoCAD electrical drawings and we can translate the variables or the attributes um, on the symbols and in the title block as well. Yeah, that's a good tool. Uh, next one is kind of, if, is there a tool to edit a lot of symbol attributes or information in like a bulk? There are global <laughs> attributes. So if you wanted to um, add an attribute um, to every single like symbol or every single um, terminal block, you can set that up um, using global attributes. I, I didn't even think about that. Uh, so that was like uh, if you have costing or part numbers or something, you know, internal oh, part so, numbers. Or do yeah, so we can, kind of like um, we also have um, importing tools where you can import in some of that data using Excel. So if you have like manufacturer part information and things like that, we can associate them with attribute fields and import that in. The other thing that we have is Excel um, import and export where you can, you're for that specific project, you can export specific information. So if you wanted to export like say, um, your wire information or your PLC information, you can export that out, make modifications, and maybe add some descriptions and things like that, and then import that data back in, and then that will show up on the schematic. Perfect. So uh, one just came in, uh, how are the libraries or parts populated? Are uh, they manually created? So, is there a stock library? Yeah, so there is a um, it does come with parts in the library. It's not going to be comprehensive to everything that you're going to use, most likely. Um, but you can manually create them. You can modify anything that's in the library. You can copy and modify anything that's in the library. There's also an electrical content portal, similar to 3D Content Central, where you can go and search for manufacturer parts. A lot of the main players have a lot of their parts out there. And those include manufacturer part information, um, a lot of them not a lot of them, but some of them include symbols, 2D footprints, 3D parts. You can also get from that um, from that portal. And then, yeah, go ahead. Um, and then you, I believe now you have to be on subscription to be able to access that and download those parts. Right. Um, do we provide services for doing that kind of thing? Because it takes a long time to get those libraries up and going. Yes, we do offer services. So we offer services for, um, we can set up a project template. Um, we can set up manufacturer parts. We can, you know, create symbols based off of something that you've sent us. So um, we can have that discussion. We also offer services to work alongside you. So if you, you want to do the work and understand it, but you want help with that, we also offer services to do that as well. All right, perfect. And then looks like, um... We've got a, a nice job on adding adding the PDF files to the project. They didn't know you could put external files in the project. So kudos on that one. Yeah, so you can add, so in, that's new for being able to print them in 2022. You can add them um, in the previous versions. I'm not sure how far back that goes. I think at least to 2017. Um, but so you can add the documentation, but in 2022, that's new to be able to print them with the final documentation. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good stuff. All right, that looks like that's all the questions that I got. I don't see any other ones coming in. All right, and then if you have any more questions or you want to see um, a deeper dive into a demo or any more advanced functionality, feel free to reach out to um, any one of us um, that's on the screen. So m myself, Stephen, or Melanie. All right, well, awesome job. That was good. That's a lot of good stuff packed in this hour, for sure. Yeah, all right, everybody have a great rest of your day. All right, thanks, Mallory. Thanks, Melanie.